begin our service this morning as we emphasize missions that the Lord has given us to carry on. We begin our service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Be not like a horse or a mule without understanding, which must be curbed with bit and bridle, or it will not stay near you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked. As a called servant of the word, I have the pleasure of announcing unto you the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in the stead, and in, by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, announce unto you the forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Amen. Seated. In our epistle lesson for this morning, the Apostle Peter emphasizes how blessed 
we as his children are. Jesus Christ was chosen by God as a living stone upon which his church is built. Now we as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Those spiritual sacrifices flow out of our hearts and lives as we carry on the privilege of working for him and with him in his grace and in his kingdom. There we proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Our epistle lesson is found recorded in 1 Peter, the second chapter, beginning with verse 6. Therefore it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore to you who believe he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but now are the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Declare his glory among the nations. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. For all the gods of the peoples are idols. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. For he is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. Please arise for the gospel reading. Our gospel lesson cannot be heard too much. It is what Martin Luther called his little Bible. The glorious light of the good news of God's love in Christ Jesus has come into the world for, for all the world. As we walk in and with this light, its reflecting glow reaches out to the hearts of people, leading them into the waiting, saving arms of our Savior Jesus. Thus, his kingdom comes to many. Our gospel lesson is found recorded in the gospel according to St. John, the third chapter beginning with verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. We now confess our faith according to the words of the Apostolic Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. Every day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And thence he shall come to judge the right hand of God. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of Christ. Congregation may be seated. The children will now begin Christ, the eternal Lord. The congregation is asked to join in the last stanza. today at this very special service in your congregation, the Festival of Missions, <clears throat> the Festival of Missions, we find the gospel recorded in the gospel according to St. John, the fifth chapter, beginning with verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? 
It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. These are the words, Holy Father, sanctify us through thy truth, thy word, is truth. Thank you in, for inviting me to come and hold the service today for your mission festival, this very special day in your congregation. It is a special day because that's really who we are. So the question, who are you, I suppose you know the answer to that. Who are you? How would you describe yourself? How do other people see you? Should I give you a few minutes to think about that? Who are you? I had the opportunity some years ago, quite a few years ago, to be invited to a Dale Carnegie course class, How to Win Friends and Influence People, remember that. A friend invited me, I guess they thought I needed something, and I guess I did, probably still do. How to Win Friends and Influence People. It was an interesting course. But one of the things that really stands out in my mind and seemed to have a sort of a practical purpose and use was this. After everyone got to know each other somewhat, after a few weeks, each individual was asked to sit in the center and the people in the class sat in chairs around them. Do you know what they did? Each one of them told us how we came across to them, how they figured we were, what we are all about, good and the bad, I don't suppose we can do that this morning, can we? It's not something that one enjoys, however it forces you into an introspection, how you think you come across to people, sometime you don't. You might miss the mark completely. But then after all, we didn't know each other that well. But there is someone who knows you, and you know who that is. The Lord God knows you. He knows everything about you. He actually knows you better than you know yourself. He created you. And you were born sinful flesh of sinful flesh. And the Lord made that right. He came to you already, many of you already as a little child, and, and poured out his love upon you through the sacrament of holy baptism. His grace and his mercy and his love poured into you the Spirit of God. And with that spirit of God, he called you into his kingdom. 
to be his very own for time and for eternity. And ever since that day, you have been blessed. The Lord functions in your life and in my life according to what is good and right for us each single day. Sometimes we look at things and we say, oh, what's going wrong here? How can we get this corrected? Well, the best way to get it corrected is to get on your knees. As Luther said, when I have so much to do, I don't know where to turn, I spend an hour in prayer. Somebody might say, oh, you've got so much to do, why don't you get at it? He said, I am. I pray about it. And ask the Lord to help me. Ask the Lord to guide me, lead me, show me the way. So who are you? The Lord God who knows everything about you tells you who you are. He tells you, you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. That's who you are. You are the children of God. No matter how long you live in this world, no matter what you become, you might become a nurse, you might become a doctor, you might become a lawyer, you might become a farmer, you might become a mechanic, you might become an electrician, whatever you become, none of it will ever come close to this one title, if you want to call it that, which God gives you. You are the children of God. How can it get better than that? How can it get more important than that? It can't. No matter how long you live, nothing will be more important than that. Now, there's a lot of famous people in the world. A lot of famous people. Sometimes they're just famous for being famous. Can't do anything much. Don't do anything. They're just famous. You ever wonder why that is? I don't know. I haven't the answer to that. Someone pretends to be someone else. On stage or on television, they pretend to be somebody else. And they might do a pretty good job of that. <laughs> and they become utterly famous. People say, I would like to be in their presence. I'd like to get them to, to sign something for me. Or someone figures out he has this nice looking formed stick in his hand and if he can stand here and somebody throws a ball by him about 90 miles an hour and he figures out a way to hit that ball out into the cow pasture and if nobody catches it and he gets on base and if he does that 30% of the time, man, is he famous. He gets his name all over the place. The sports page is filled with it. Besides that, he gets paid millions of dollars because he figured out how to hit that ball so nobody could catch it. And he went to first base. Does that measure up to being a child of God? I don't think so. Not even close. But yet, of course, the world pours out the fame upon this person. 
And there are folks, of course, who uh, yell or scream or sing. There's a difference, you know. And they get everybody's attention, and they do this on television. And some of them are pretty good singers. But there's a lot of screeching and yelling. And they become an American idol. What do you know? Does that measure up to being a child of God? I don't think so. But yet, you probably, because you are a child of God, will not become famous for that, right? I don't think anybody's going to say about you as you walk down the street, look there. That's a child of God. I don't think anybody's going to look at you and consider you to be famous because of that. In fact, the Apostle Paul says it's kind of a contradiction in the middle of this world. The Apostle Paul says you are unknown and yet well-known. As dying, and behold, we live. As chastened, and not killed. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. As poor, yet making many rich. As having nothing, and yet possessing all things. Because God has given everything into your hands. He has another title for you. He says, you, as you heard that already in the gospel lesson or in our sermon text, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Does that mean very much to you? Salt. Well, you can flavor things for it, with it, but what else? Well, some of us grew up at a time when it had a very, very special meaning, my friends. Some of you sitting here probably grew up during that time, even though not many are as old as I am. But salt was used as a preservative agent regularly. I still remember butchering out with I always the coldest day in the world. In the, in the whole year, I think. Butchering that pig. Dunking it into the boiling water, which we took most of the day to heat up. And then cutting that animal up, and then how in the world are you going to preserve it when you don't have any electricity? Now, some of you young folks might say, what in the world kind of a day was that? Well, yeah, some of us lived through that. No electricity, would you believe no telephone? But we preserved the meat. How did we do that? We used salt, we rubbed it in, and then of course we made a smokehouse out of an old outhouse, and we hung it in there and smoked it until it was all cured. Some of you remember that? Walter, you remember that? Yeah. And where did we put it? No refrigerator, no ice box. In the granary. Granary? Weren't there mice in there? Yeah. But it was full of grain, and we buried the meat under the grain, and those stupid mice never found it. But boy, every once in a while, we had to go out to the granary and get a ham or a loin and bring it in and mom fixed it. We knew what salt really meant. It was there to preserve. The Lord says you are the salt of the earth. Now what in the world is the Lord talking about there? 
This world, if you haven't noticed, is totally corrupt. If you haven't noticed, just look in the paper every day or listen to the evening news. And not very many days ago, you folks near Sleepy Eye had something happen which shows you the corruption that is everywhere in the world as a man shot his wife in the head and then decapitated her head and burnt her in his van hoping that she would be destroyed. Total savageness. Worse than animals. On television we have this man standing with a knife in his hand and he will decapitate the person and he did. But it's not shown because nobody wants to look at that. It's so bad. I read in the paper the other day that in our country, in our world, there are over 40 wars going on right now. Over 40 people killing each other, slaughtering, murdering, raping. And I know you might say, oh my, this is depressing. <laughs> yes, it is except that the Lord tells us, in the middle of this world, my kingdom continues, and it will continue even unto the end of this rotten, wretched world, which oftentimes is that way. We live in a rather nice place, you know. There are places where people you know are fleeing and running and getting away from all of this. They don't know where to go anymore. Some of them are starving to death. But we had a war, World War I. That was going to end all wars, right? Did it do it? Don't think so. We had World War II. That was going to finish it once and for all. Didn't happen. Wasn't very long, we were in the Korean thing, and I got my taste of that one. Then there was the Vietnam, and after Vietnam, then Afghanistan and Iraq, and now we're doing it again, right? Will this ever stop? No. We're living in a corrupted world. Now, my friends, the Lord says, you. I'm going to lay it on the line, folks. No easy way out of this. You are the salt of the earth. You have the only means by which this corruption can be overcome. That's you. Nobody else. You have what it takes to overcome this terrible activity that goes on in this world. How do you do that? You might say, oh, this is way too much for me. Yes, it is. But God simply says, I am giving you what it takes to do it. I'm giving you the tools. And the tools are simple, simple, simple. It is his word of life. That word by which the Holy Spirit enters people's hearts and makes out of them new people. Makes out of them people who live for God rather than self. Who want to carry on in this world praising their Lord and giving him all glory. That's how God created us in the first place. That's how he wanted us to be. And in Christ Jesus, you see, we become what he wants us to be. Oh, we have our sinful flesh, and we have to fight with that every day. And sometimes that gets in the way and causes us to do things we don't want to do. 
but we turn away by God's grace. By the power of the Spirit, we say, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to live for my Savior. I'm going to live for my Lord. That's the Spirit of God within us. You are not, you should be, not you ought to be. You are the salt of the earth, the children of God, the most important people in this world. It doesn't matter if people recognize that or not. That's not, that doesn't matter, does it? It matters that God knows it. And he tells you that's what you are. Well, if that's not enough, the Lord says, not only are you the salt of the earth, but you are the light of the world. Now, I suppose some of you might say, now, just a minute here. I am the light of the world. Isn't Jesus Christ the light of the world? Didn't he say somewhere, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The light of life. Those who follow him, you see and accept his words and give those words to others and tell people about their salvation in Jesus Christ who has come into this world to live for us and to suffer for us and to die for us and to arise for us and to give us this new life. That's what makes you the light. Now, when you have a light and and you walk in, you know, we used to years ago understand that probably better too. <laughs> because we walked around with a lantern. I wonder how come barns didn't burn down. But we walked around with a lantern through the chores. And boy, it was a great thing when we got the lanterns with a mantle on that actually gave us some light. The kerosene lanterns didn't. <laughs> didn't light up very much. But you are the light of the world. The light, not a light. You're the only one. You see, we can't, we can't get rid of that. You might say, well, but, 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 but I'm not a missionary. I, I, don't, I can't do this. Yes, you can, and you do. Every one of you is a missionary. And you do what you can do, whatever that is. And the Lord takes that whatever you do and turns it into something. Now, now we all know examples of that, don't we? Some of you remember. I remember very well. I was on the mission board for this church body. And I was on the mission board, but we had meetings and, and, and we, we didn't have any money. So there wasn't much you could do, right? But there was a man. I think he lived in California. And he communicated with somebody in Africa. And this information then from this person who said that we should do something here was turned over to us and we looked at it and we said, well, that's wonderful. <laughs> We haven't got any money. And this person said, I don't care. All I want is the word of God. All we think should be here is what our Lord says. Well, without going into details, you know what happened. We stepped through that little crack in the door that the Lord opened up. And now, we don't know where to go first. There's people here and there's people there in various areas of Africa who would like for us to come and serve them. 
In India, there was a young fellow who, once again, we had no contact. A little, there was a fellow who, who was in the 4-H, and, and he had a, a, uh, some kind of a scholarship. And he went there, and then he got ill. He went to the hospital. And he met a man there, wonderful man. Can't think of his name now. But he too just wanted the word of God. And we said, well, we can do that. We don't have any money, but I think we can, we can come and help you with that. That little tiny kernel, that little tiny grain, turned into a tremendously big field of grain. And now, once again, there is so much there to do that we hardly can find enough people to do it. And they are doing a lot themselves, mainly, primarily, and we are trying to help a little bit. You see, my friends, when we say, I don't think I can do that, I don't think I can be the salt of the earth, the light of the world, Yes, you can, and you are. We need to just step through those doors that the Lord opens for us. And this, give them that wonderful truth of God's love for them in Christ Jesus. That's all he asked us to do. You see, it's not such a difficult task. The Lord didn't say, okay, every one of you who has become a child of God, now I've got a job for you, and before you die, you've got to convert 20 people, and that's it. He never said that. He just said, you tell people what God has done for you and what he has given you. You just tell people about that. And I'll take care of the rest. I'll convert them. I'll bring them into my kingdom. But do this one thing for me. As the Lord Jesus says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. That's all. And the Lord says, I'll do the rest. And he does. It's amazing, isn't it? But let's not ever forget who we really are. He tells us there are people who walked in darkness, have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. And you are the light of the world. That's the light that's going to shine. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Don't ever forget it. But thank God for that privilege, that wonderful opportunity that he has given us to work together with him in carrying on the grandest work there is on this side of eternity. May the Lord grant us his grace in Jesus' name. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Jesus and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.